What can you tell us about testing? Does more testing automatically, I mean, where are we on testing? Do we understand how much uh, people, how much percentage of the population have had COVID-19 and are now immune to it? Yeah, you know, I think you know, the first and most important thing is testing is a good thing. Um, rarely does testing give you information that is bad, right? We want to try to make sure we're testing as many people as possible. We also want to know not only the total number of cases, but the percent of people that are coming in for testing that are positive for the virus. Those are two very different numbers, and they help us figure out where we are in terms of being able to control the infection. So we need to do more testing. Um, we need to follow up that testing with more of this contact tracing so that when we find individuals that are positive for the virus, we can go back and identify their contacts and try to get them to self-isolate and minimize transmission. That's the way that we're going to get out of, uh, of, of relieving public health interventions to get the economy going again. Dr. Pekos, what does it mean for the hospitals of Tulsa when you see 50 or 500 or dare say 19,000 people stacked in together at an event, some with masks and too many without masks. What does that signal to the medical community of Tulsa, Oklahoma? Well, we know that the, the numbers of cases can take anywhere up to two weeks before you really understand how a particular event has a mediated transmission. So. These kind of things, and we're seeing that with some of the numbers in terms of the economic um, in opening up in the economy, we're seeing this slow increase because this virus takes anywhere up to sometimes up to 10 to 14 days before you start showing symptoms after an exposure, um, and you can still be transmissible during that time. So this is going to be one of the key critical events that needs to be followed for several weeks to make sure that um, uh, hospital capacities are uh, up to par to be able to deal with this potential surge in cases. But the president said testing is overrated. Is it? No, testing is absolutely critical. I can't emphasize that enough. We need to know who's infected. We need to follow the population in terms of what percentage of people that are showing symptoms are actually infected with the virus. Those are the critical things that are going to help us open up the economy. Other countries have shown that if you can get the, num the percent of tests down uh, to a level CDC recommends 5 percent or so, it's easier to keep the virus at that level than it is to keep it at a level that's higher than that. And I think we're seeing that with some of the states that have opened up their economies and not reached that level of 5 percent testing. It's hard to keep the virus down if you've got hundreds or thousands of people that are walking around infected. Um, Andrew, d does antibody testing work? So we've had so many false negatives. Does it actually paint a clear picture of how many people have had it? So th this is different to testing on whether you have COVID-19 at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, antibody tests are also a critical component to try to understand um, who has been exposed and, um, and to catch those cases that were missed in terms of the initial testing for the virus. I think we're learning that there are a lot of kits out there uh, that test for antibodies. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, public health and, um, agencies and hospitals are sorting through that information and starting to use the good kits to get a good sense of measuring antibodies. Um, we're going to know in the next two or three weeks a lot more about what an antibody test is really telling us about uh, your protection from infection, because there's a lot of groups that are studying this right now. All the signs so far look good. If you have a strong antibody response, that's probably going to be associated with protection. But some of these studies are right now working their way through the peer review process, and uh, we'll see them in the next couple of weeks. Um, Dr. Pekosh, we found a drug that actually helps in uh, people that are getting very sick fr from dying. There's also this convalescent plasma therapy, which is basically injecting people that, you know, with antibodies. Like, how much have we made progress in the last couple of, of weeks? Yeah, so convalescent plasma therapy is one of the bright spots in terms of uh, treatments for COVID-19 patients. Um, a number of studies have come out suggesting that um, there's a benefit to giving individuals this plasma. Um, it reduces mortality rates. Uh, it speeds up recovery. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done uh, to get this implemented across the country. Um, but all signs point to 
plasma therapy as being a great, I call it a stopgap measure, um, because um, there are better antibody therapies in the pipeline, but right now, plasma therapy is what we can use. And I think the use of that is going to expand significantly given the uh, good results that we've seen treating patients that have severe disease.